Hi folks, it's Evo here from Thunderous Lure Company. So glad to see you and welcome to today's episode of Thunderous Fishing Tips. Well, I'm not really set up here with my trolling rod. Uh, I've got my jigging rod with me, but I want to do a little bit of trolling for an hour or so. So I'm, I'm going to do that. I'm out here fishing the eastern shores of Lake Erie, uh, just outside of Buffalo. And what I'm going to do, folks, I'm just going to troll this shoreline with the American Smelt Crankbait. And uh, I've got the silver purple one on right now. And all I did was I just put a single snap on there. You could use a snap swivel if you want, but you don't need the swivel because it's not spinning. It's just wobbling. So a single snap is what I've got on there right now. And I'm going to let out about 100 feet of, uh, of line. And today, folks, I'm looking for either uh, bass or walleye. I'm going to troll this shoreline in a bit of an S pattern and uh, see if I could trigger one of those fish to bite. The American smelt's got rattles in it. The water is actually a little bit murky, so I've got the, the purple one right now I'm opening up with, but I might switch over to the gold. We'll, we'll see how it goes because uh, the gold would reflect a little better, I think, in this murky water. But the water temp uh, right here is 49 degrees. It's about a uh, hundred feet of line out. I'm traveling at about two and a half speed, two and a half mile an hour right now. And when I troll, I love to hold the rod in my hand as opposed to stick it in the rod holder. It's much more exciting when you get a bite as opposed to just putting it in a rod holder and setting the hook. So that's gonna be the technique. I'm gonna troll a little bit in an S pattern here and to keep my speed around two and a half mile an hour, see if I can trigger a bite. Oh boy, folks. That's, that's got some weight to it right there. Wow, that's gotta be a walleye. It's not a walleye, it's a huge bass. But he's got some weight to him right there. 26 feet of water. I haven't been trolling but five minutes. In fact, I just started having a snack. <laughs> and, and of course, I got a bite. Oh, this, this feels like a real nice fish, folks. Oh, this feels like a real good one. Let me turn the, shut the motor off. Whatever it is, it's running. It's running. Oh. Now I had, like I said, I had about 100 feet of line behind the boat. I'm trolling at two and a half mile an hour. And the only reason, the only reason folks for the S pattern is just so that I don't want to troll straight because then my lure is straight behind the boat. By traveling with the S pattern, your, your lure is gonna be off to the side as you do your zigzag out of the noise of the boat but you know I think this little bit of a tinge in the water is helping keep these fish in the shallower water I think and like I said I'm not using my this is not my ideal rod for trolling this is my jigging rod I uh, didn't plan on trolling today but I got the itch to troll this this one shoreline in, in 25 to 30 feet of water so I'm using my jigging rod. I would much rather have, you know, a seven and a half foot, eight foot medium action rod with a slow tip. And I'd much rather be trolling with, uh, oh, with fluorocarbon or mono. But I don't know, folks, what? He's just taking drag and my drag is tight. I have no idea what we got here. But <laughs> he's running. What the? It could just be a big smallie. I don't know. Now, the big walleye, those big walleye, they will fight. He didn't break water, so I'm... I'm having... I'm tendency... have a tendency... Oh. To believe that it's not a bass, but it could be. I just don't know. Watch it be a sheephead. <laughs> hey, you know what? I really don't care. Whatever it is, it's giving me a good fight. And it's got a lot of weight. He's got some, he's got some, as Antonio would say, he's got some shoulders. And he is staying down there, folks. I just... I just can't do anything with him. I... Now, when they run like that, you just, you gotta let them run. If you try reeling while they're peel and drag, all you're doing is creating a whole lot of line twist on your reel. So when they run, just let them run. 
and then you can pump the rod like this and slowly gain on them just like this whatever this is folks I'm telling you it's a nice fish he's got some weight to him and I just can't bring him in Ooh, what do I see there I just saw a big log on the water I just saw a big log on the water so I don't think it was a bass but it was hard for me to tell actually these are prescription I should have them on I would be able to see it a little bit better <laughs> but oh there it is there I got a glimpse of them I think it's a walleye or it might be a pike or a muskie I I don't know I think it's a walleye we shall see I hope we shall see I hope I land them okay there he is there Wow I'm just palming my drag a bit and be very careful especially so close to the boat Wow You know what folks it's not a walleye that's a trout and a beauty wow that's a brown trout folks that's a brown trout <laughs> look at this oh. <laughs> it's a beautiful beautiful brown trout i was not expecting that not expecting that at all. If you would have said to me, you're going out to Lake Erie for browns, I would say absolutely not. Lake Ontario? Absolutely yes. What a bonus fish this is. That's a beauty. Wow. Just a beautiful, beautiful uh, brown, folks. Look how thick this fish is. I got to get this fish landed. Oh, so strong. I can't believe how strong this, this brown trout is, folks. Wow, so strong. Okay, the hook is right in the side of his mouth. Wow, look how thick. Oh my goodness, folks. That's a heavy brown. That is one heavy fish. <sighs> we're, gonna get, we're gonna get a weight on this guy. Wowzer! You can see the hook just in the side of the mouth right there and a big mouth he's got oh wow okay you know what let's get a weight on him right in the net because I don't have a bag or anything and then I'll take him out for a photo let's see what we got here we got 12 point eight 12 14 almost 13 pounds so let's take off this is a heavier net let's take off two pounds it's an 11 pounder folks right there 11 pounder look how thick he's so thick can't believe how thick that fish is folks that is one big thick brown trout right there holy mackerel okay a quick uh, photo for Instagram and Facebook and I think I think we're gonna keep this brown folks the trout out of Lake Erie are very very clean and very good eating and he's gonna bake up real nice I think so quick photo we'll get right back at it thick and wide and you know they probably are feeding on smelts right in here smelts and shad but I honestly didn't think I'd be hooking into a brown trout and the way he was fighting he was fighting a little bit like a lake trout but I thought I don't know lake trout maybe maybe but uh, that was a real nice pleasant surprise okay so we're gonna let 100 feet back out again and we're gonna stay in this 25 to 30 feet of water to see if we can get in another fish or two but well what a start that was exciting I love it there we go another nice pickup folks oh, oh. I am in 30 feet of water right now oh and he just jumped so I gotta say it's got to be a bass must be a bass because he broke the surface but on the other hand who knows 
it could be another trout. I have no idea now. That was very nice. So I mentioned about the S trolling. The other thing it does is as you're doing that S troll, your lure is going to change speeds. It's going to be quicker on the inside and slower on the outside. Oh yeah, that's got to be a bass. He's on top of the water and he's splashing. It's, it's a smallie. He did not hesitate to take that American smelt crankbait. But these fish are on the bite are aggressive. This is, this is what a nice day to be out here. Now, I also mentioned with the braided line and not being my preferred for trolling. I actually got a three part series online where I talk about fluorocarbon line, monofilament line, and braided line, the pros and cons of both. And there's three separate videos. I'll put a link here for you. You can check them out. In the meanwhile, I want to take a look at this smallie, see what the what size bass we got here, folks. And because I'm running braided line and you're trolling, you can't really set the hook hard. You're already, boat's already moving. You got no stretch in the line. You gotta be very careful. Just kind of lean into them a bit and, uh, and then take the pressure off right away. Feels like a nice smallie, folks. My drag is set. He's staying down there right now. Usually when they jump, they got a good chance to uh, to lose them because they can shake the hook. But, okay, let's see what we got here, folks. Feels like a decent fish, but you know, these smallies are so strong. Yeah, it's a nice small mole, folks. It's a decent size, not a huge one, but he's decent. Okay, nice smallie right there. Very nice. Right in the top of the lip. Beautiful. Oh, beautiful, beautiful fish. That's about a, that's about a three pounder, I'm gonna say. I'm gonna say he's three pounds. Let's just give him a lip lock here. Yeah, that's a good, that's a good three pounder. And just nice little, oh, watch that trouble in the hand. There we go. Nice little hook set. You know what, I'm gonna snap a quick photo of him too, but we're gonna get this guy right back in again. Beautiful Lake Erie smallmouth right there. Okay, gonna get him right back in the water again. And away he goes, see you later, Mr. Smalley. Okay, so what we're gonna do, he came out of 28 feet. And because I'm running this braided line, the American smelt normally dives 20 feet, but it's diving right now about I'm going to say 25. I'm hitting bottom at 25 because this braided line is so thin, it's allowing that American smoke crankbait to actually dive deeper than it normally does. So I'm going to stay out here in about, I'll hang out at about 28 feet and get my line right back out there again. And he continues rolling. Just when you think you got a snag and you set into a fish. Okay. That feels pretty heavy. Let's see here. Oh yeah, feels pretty heavy. Feels like a good fish. Now, now I also, I mean, it goes without saying, you know me folks with the braided line, of course I'm running a fluorocarbon leader. And the fluorocarbon leader is 10 pound test. And the other thing I did I don't know if I mentioned it earlier or not, but if you are trolling with braid, even though I don't like to troll with braid, if you are trolling with braid, keep your drag on the looser side. Because when that fish hits, if you've got a tight drag and no stretch on that line, and the boat's moving two to three mile an hour, you're gonna pull that lure right out of the fish's mouth. So ideally, your drag has to be a little bit looser, which is different. As you know, when I'm jigging, folks, I, I always have my drag tight for the hook set and then I back off on it. But for this kind of fishing, it's the other way around. I think I got myself another bass. He's on top of the water. So I'm guessing it's a bass. Maybe not, I don't. No, I don't know, folks. I, you know, 
what? That's, is that a bass or a walleye? I still can't tell. Now he's going down. Now he's going down. The water's clear, but not that clear that I can't, I just can't make him out. But he's starting to fight like a bass. Because he is a bass. That's a nice small. Oh, that's a chunk right there, folks. That's a chunk. Solid, thick, solid fish right there. Thick, thick, solid, smallie. Oh, yeah. Get that hook. I like these rubber nets as it takes, makes it easier to get the hooks out. And you know what? I got a needle nose right here. I always do that. I always try to get it out with my hands. When I got a needle nose, it makes it so much easier. Just like that. Hey, okay. that's a nice smallie right there, folks. It's about, uh, he's, a, he's an honest three pounder right there. Maybe three and, I'm gonna say three and a half. That's a nice fish, because he's thick. You see when they got that thick tail, they got they got more weight to him. He's, a, he's an honest three and a half pounder. Okay, let's get him right back in again. Okay, see you later, Mr. Smalley. <laughs> that feels like it could be another Smalley. I'm thinking that's another smallie, folks. I'd love it to be a walleye, but it looks like the bass are in here today. And I think I'm happy I made that choice to go with the purple. It's definitely working. This guy's got some weight to him. Well, he's staying down there, so. Although, but he's giving me those head shakes like a, like a bass. You know, the walleye don't give those real quick head shakes. They give more of a slower head shake. But sometimes, you never know. That's the beauty of fishing. So you get them in the net, you don't know what you got. But he has not surfaced yet, so... Hmm. Okay. Let me get him in here. Yeah, he's staying down there. He gave me a real good bite too, and when he when he bit, I actually leaned to him a bit just to give him a bit of line, take away some of that pressure from this from this uh, from this braided line. Twenty nine feet of water he hit. Oh, it's a nice smallie. Oh, that's a big bass. That's a, that's a big bass. Oh, that's a good size smallie right there, folks. That is one chunky fish. That is one chunky fish. Yes! Oh, yeah. It's four and a half, anyway. I'm not going to say five, but I'm going to say four and a half. That's a nice, solid, smallmouth. Definitely photo worthy right there folks. Definitely photo worthy. That's a chunk. Yeah, I'm gonna say That's an honest four and a half pounds folks right there. Nice thick big thick tail Big thick body nice wide girth Beautiful beautiful smallie. Okay, let's get him right back in the water again. Boy these fish are healthy All right, and see you later Mr. Smallie back down to 29 feet he goes Back out I go. <laughs> I go get the lure wet again. There's another one, folks. 26 feet of water. Oh, he's already on top. It's another smallie. We got ourselves another nice Lake Erie smallmouth, folks. I love it when they break the water like that. Mind you, that's when they got a good chance to also shake the hook. Especially with the braided line. Oh, it feels like a decent fish. Oh yeah, but what a way to cover cover water, folks. Just a nice slow troll, covering a lot of water, catching a lot of fish. Oh boy. Now if I was gonna, I was thinking of going in a little bit tighter and fishing, you know, 10 to 15 feet. I did bring some misty minnows with me, but you know what, if the fish are out here and 25, 30 feet of water, why well, change? You know what they say, you don't leave fish to find fish. So 
I'm not about to leave fish to find fish. Okay. Oh yeah, decent, decent bass, decent fish. I had a lot of line out there. I might have had a little more than 100 feet out this time. Okay. Oh yeah, actually that's a that's a nice bass, folks. It's a good fish. It looks it looks like a good fish. When they struggle to break water, you know, when they come up and they they have a hard time jumping because they're so heavy, you know, you got yourself a decent fish. Oh, this one's that's a thick fish. It's just a thick smallie, real thick bass, folks, real thick. Beautiful coloration on this fish. Look at that. Look at the coloration on that fish. Beautiful. That's a nice Lake Erie smallie right there, folks. That is a nice Lake Erie smallie. Right there. Oh, he's got to be four pounds. He's thick. He's short and stocky, but he's really, really thick. All right. Let's get the needle nose again. Oh, yeah, that's a beautiful fish. I might need a photo of this one. Hey, isn't that a nice bass right there, folks? That's a beauty. Maybe a quick photo and then we'll get him in.